everybody. Welcome back to the Suspense Squad, where authors interview authors. And tonight we have one of our very own Loretta Eason. Yay! <laughs> Loretta is going to be having her book, first book, her debut novel released. Loretta, you want to give us the date for that? September 27th. This oh, also so very... Very soon, coming up. All right. Well, do you have a, a picture of your book or show us the cover of your book? I yes. do. And I saw your yeah. reveal the other day on Facebook. That was so much fun. I just got it last night. All oh, right. So <laughs> <laughs> pursued in the wilderness. Okay. Yeah. You'll read the back cover copy for us. All right. So we can learn a little bit about this fantastic novel. All right. Her baby's life depends on one man and his canine. The murder of her ex-husband at a remote cabin and the discovery that the killers want to take her about-to-be-born baby sends Brooke Chandler running into the Tennessee mountains. She stumbles into the campsite of canine handler Trent Williston and his search and rescue dog Rex. Trent vows to get Brooke and her baby to safety, but with the killers on their heels and the impending birth of Brooke's baby, the threats of the wilderness, they must first survive. Mm. Sounds so Sounds good. good. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you know how this works. We go around, we ask you some questions, you get to talk about your book, and then we will shoot this out to all of our viewers. And hopefully it will, you know, boost your sales and give you a great debut release. Sounds good. All right. So let's start with, I'm going to let Miss Dana go first. Oh, cool. I don't think I've ever gone first before. Oh, there you go. You were first all night. <laughs> Congratulations, Loretta. I'm so excited for you on your debut novel. Uh, sounds fascinating. But my question is, what was the inspiration for this story? The inspiration, honestly, I can't even tell you. It's just dropped in my head when my agent, who is Tamala Hancock-Murray, sent me an invitation or an offer to try out for this uh, mountain rescue uh, collection. I was already working on a mountain scene. So when she sent me that email, I told her, well, sure, I want to try out for it. So I said, I'm working on one now and I'll just tweak it and make it fit. And she says, tweak away. <laughs> so I had the document open already, so I, I started with the first line of the document to start tweaking, and all of a sudden, this thought came into my head, because I was thinking, okay, if I was running through the forest, or if it was a mountain for me with the mountains, I love the mountains, but I don't like all the poison ivy, and I don't like the bears, and the, you know, all that. anyway, I'm just weird, Bugs. but anyway, um, the idea just immediately dropped in my head and, you know, I had been praying and praying and praying and praying. It's been 11 years. And so I'd been praying about this and all I can say, I'm not saying God gave me the story, but I am saying that, that nudging the, the inspiration, I mean, it had to have been something that he dropped into my head. So, I mean, I wrote the story. It's not God writing the story, but anyway. That's, um, that's all I know to tell you. I just immediately wrote it and I had to send them the first three chapters and I did it within a week. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, I had a contract. Loretta, I think it's really interesting too that you said it's been 11 years. So just, I'm, I'm going to kind of interject here and this is putting you on the spot. So, but tell our viewers, you know, what kept you going through that 11 years? Because that's, you know, it takes years sometimes to get books published and you didn't give up. And I think that's so important for new writers. It really is. Originally, when I was working my job at the church, I encountered so many people in the church that, you know, had problems and they would come and I would be their sounding board. So, you know, then I wanted, I started thinking, what if I could write books that could reach out to people? Anyway, so that started, that's what prompted me to start writing. I just felt like God was directing me that direction. Well, through the whole process, rejection after rejection after rejection. I mean, you send it in, you think it's great. It's not so great. You know, y'all you know, know the process, but 
I did get frustrated a lot. I would walk away from my computer. I would say, I quit, I give up. And then I'm thinking, no, I put too much into it already. You know, I can't give up now. I've got to keep going, just keep pressing in, keep, keep pressing in. And, you know, some of the edits that I got back, especially when I entered contest, I mean, you know, I did win contest, a, con a couple of contests and I placed in contests, just like, you know, many of us do. But, you know, sometimes the, the critiques you get back from contests, some are really good and some, you know, hurt. They <laughs> sting, don't they? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just had to, and two, my family really didn't know that I was serious for a long time because they thought it was just like a hobby. And I really wanted that as uh, a goal. I wanted to do this. I wanted to reach out to people in a way uh, and my little, my little motto is God can make a way where there appears to be no way. Mm. And so that's what our stories are about is how God mm. makes ways for all of our characters. So anyway, but yeah, it, it was a long process. And then finally, the, I guess the past three years, my family finally realized that I was serious and they started encouraging more, me more, but um, on the most part, it was. Like I talked to Darlene a lot and, you know, and then I talked to, you know, going to conferences and stuff. Uh, in fact, one conference that I went to, and I'll throw this in real quick. One conference, when I went to Blue Ridge one year, about what, three years ago, I went to Blue Ridge and, and on the flight going to Blue Ridge, I was staring out the window of the plane. I didn't even know why I was going to that conference because I just didn't have it in me. And I said, God, in my head, I didn't say it out loud because there were people there. Might be a good idea to say it out loud. We need a lot of prayer right? <laughs> on, the, on the airplanes I, these days. Yeah, and I said, God, I don't know. I, I thought I was in your will, but I don't know if if I really am. Can you just, I said, I hate to ask you to confirm stuff for me. I just feel like I just mm -hmm. need some kind of confirmation. Well, you know, I got to the conference and I really, I don't think I even attended a lot of classes. I just kind of moped around a little bit. But anyway, that was the conference that I won first place. Mm. And, you know, there were other little things that happened that really encouraged me. So between the conferences, going to conferences were really encouraging and keep, keep, you know, they build you up and get you excited about it. I love the way God does that. It's we're at that point where we want to quit and you're like, God, I can't do this anymore. And then he's like, oh, yes, you can. And he gives you that gentle, beautiful moment. Yeah. And you're like hooked again. <laughs> you're like, I don't know if it's a good thing. You're not the nudge. nudge. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Do he what? Nudge. He gives you the nudge back. He does. He and, and the inspiration back. You know, you're on the right path. Keep following me. Keep being faithful. And I think right. it's about being obedient to what he's called us to do, not necessarily about Exactly. The accolades or the publish the right. numbers of published books. And I think when you learn, when you realize that, when you finally get to that point where it's because we're being obedient to what he's called us to do, that that's when you really become a true writer when you and do I it for, think, for him. Yeah. And I think too, don't be yourself. Don't yeah. try to be somebody else. Yes. Because yes. you get your focus on a really good author and you think I'm going to be like her. Yeah. And then when th things start falling apart, you're like, why can't I be like her? <laughs> so, you know, be yourself. Yeah. Great, great advice. Okay, let's move on. We are going to move to Miss Darlene. Oh, congratulations, Loretta. I'm so happy Thank for you. you. This is so exciting. I'm halfway through your book, loving it. Great. Oh, so, okay, here's my question. Okay. I want you to tell us something about yourself that we can't find anywhere on the internet. Well, I thought about that. And I think one thing you can't find on the internet is that I was a backup singer for a recording at Ardent Studios several years ago. That's so cool. <laughs> I did not know that about it. I didn't you. know that either. Yeah. And I actually wrote the song. Oh my wow. gosh. Wow. You've been holding out on us. <laughs> Are you yeah. going to sing it for us? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I have a little look, piece, little chorus. Look, singing wasn't what I wanted to, really wanted to do. And so after that recording, 
I cried all the way home because it was, it was so tense for me. I mean, it may sound crazy. And so I quit singing. Mm -hmm. You know, they say if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to hear me sing now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I did. Wow. That's awesome. That's uh, so cool. I never knew that about you. <laughs> well, now it's on the internet, so you can't yeah. use that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to Miss Sammy. Hi, Loretta. I'm so happy for you. Yay, so excited. <laughs> okay, who is your favorite secondary character and why? Because mm. you know, those readers, they pick up on those secondary characters and they're always wanting us to keep them in there. So. Well, there's three main characters and I in my in this book which you know is Trent and Brooke and then then you have Rex so it's really there's kind of three main ones but Rex could be a secondary but I guess the villain could be a secondary the main one I mean there's three guys chasing after her but there's one main one that she recognizes the voice but she can't place who it belongs to and so I guess he could kind of be a secondary, but I really like Rex because she, she is afraid of animals, period. And when she sees this dog, she thinks this dog is going to eat her up. <laughs> and so she has to learn that when the handler accepts her, the dog will accept her. So mm. anyway, I liked Rex. He ended up doing a lot of rescue. <laughs> gotta love the dog I know gotta right? love the dog. yes okay last question we are going to miss patty so I always like to ask this question and that is every writer has a unique process the way their brain works fascinates me and so I'm wondering what your process is well my process I am a pantser or I thought I was a pantser <laughs> <laughs> until I realized that you have to write synopsises to send, you know, and then you have to write all this stuff. And sometimes when you don't have the story down and all of a sudden you got to write a synopsis, it's like, okay, I got to put the story together right here. So, but I still am a pantser because I still, even between all this stuff in the synopsis, um, you know, you fill in, you fill in the blanks. My, but as far as what I do, I really love to, which I know everybody would like to do this, I really love to get up early and go to my computer and just write to my heart's desire. Does that work? Not always, obviously. Uh, so my life has been rather chaotic lately. So it's, <laughs> so it's kind of whenever I can find some time. I have learned to take my laptop everywhere with my husband in the hospital, you know, pursuit in the wilderness was completed with, uh, when my dad was in the hospital, I completed it sitting there, uh, in the hospital room. Uh, I completed my edits in the hospital room, all that. And then now, you know, here's my husband in the hospital. <laughs> so I'm writing again, but anyway, mm -hmm. just whenever, whenever I can find those spare, and I, I like more than 30 minutes. I mean, I want hours. So like, if I don't get to my computer till eight at night, I may write till one in the morning. So I just have to, right now I'm having to just slide in there anytime. There's not any real process consistent for me right now. Check it out and be sure and come back next month to uh, join us again. Have a great night. Thank you.